Hey everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure. Today I want to go over a little buggy C program. Um, there's a paper that I got this copy to buffer function from, essentially. I, I modified it a bit, but I'm going to link that paper in the description because I think it's an interesting paper. You should read it. But they wrote a function that was similar to this one, and they use it to demonstrate a, you know, a buffer overflow or integer, what they call the integer overflow in the paper. Um, I wouldn't call this an integer overflow, what I'm about to show you, because technically unsigned integers cannot overflow, but they just wrap around to zero. Um, you can read more about that as well. But it's basically the same type of logic that's going on. So um, there's that so there's there's really kind of three or maybe even four different code flaws in here um so we'll just kind of go through and see what happens really quick so um first of all what the program essentially is doing is it asks the user for a buffer a size and a buffer b size and then it it has these two like static character or static strings basically here and it passes them to this copy to buffer function. And what the copy to buffer function does is it just creates a buffer down here of size 256 bytes. And then it copies the, you know, the, the data from the two static strings in this case or whatever is passed to it into this buffer kind of one after the other. You can see here we do st stir and copy uh, buffer, and, you know, so copy into the buffer, the data pointed to by A, the size of A, and then copy into buffer plus the size of A. So in other words, go to the end of what, what we just copied and then copy B and the size of B. So it's going to take some memory, uh, that buffer memory there, it's going to copy um, both A and B in there. However, you know, we have a check here that says if the, you know, if the the uh, total size of what we would be trying to copy into the buffer is greater than the buffer size return negative one. So it seems like we have a pretty valid uh, legit check here, right? Because even in the case that, you know, there's a, there's some kind of a wrap and it, you know, it, it, you would think that if it wrapped around, it would be between zero and buff size again. So there wouldn't really be much harm, but there is a little bit of a caveat here. And these things actually, it's funny because it's a pretty basic vulnerability, very common, but it's more complex than you would think. So um, let's see kind of what happens now when we try to, to run the program. So I'm gonna go over here. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna start it. it. Says enter buffer A size. So we're gonna say, five and then 10 for buffer B. So we can see here um, that it says we entered five and 10. And then at the beginning of the function call, they were five and 10 just as we entered. And then uh, the vulnerable the vulnerable total is 15 and the real total is 15. And we'll explain that in a minute. So now um, let's try another one. Let's try to make it go out of bounds past the size of 256. So I'm going to say buffer A size 500, buffer B size 25. And it says, you know, we entered 525. Um, the vulnerable total is 525 and the real total is 525. So there's not really an issue there either because 525 uh, is greater than the buff size. And so we return negative one. We didn't do anything dangerous. Okay. However, let's try something else. So if you're not aware, if you enter a in, in, in this fashion, since we don't have any type of sanitization, essentially, if you were to do something like this um, in your code, that is going to end up being essentially the max unsigned integer number. So um, I'm going to go off the screen here and I think it's like, let's see. 
I'm going to take a look at what it is. It, it, these are available in the limits.h header file. So um, in ser several cases, it's it's four billion two hundred ninety four million nine hundred sixty uh, seven thousand two hundred ninety five. <laughs> okay. So essentially, if you had something like this in the code, num would would end up being a very large number because it's it's an unsigned number, and you're saying negative one, and you're setting the value of the number to uh, very high because the way sign numbers are represented it, uh, involves the top bit. So a negative one is represented uh, in the same way as a very large number when it's unsigned, essentially. So you could read more about that elsewhere. It's kind of complicated, a little outside the scope of the video. So that being said, what I'm going to do now is run this, and then uh, I'm going to enter buffer a size negative one, and then I'm going to enter buffer b size five, and it's like, all right, now we just caused a bad thing to happen. So let's just kind of examine what happened. So as you can see, I did run this with, with address sanitizer um, so you could get more information on what's going on here. So this time we have a negative one and a five, and then it says, whoa, copy to buffer. So the when the value actually went into the uh, copy to buffer function, it's 4,294,967,295 and then five. So now what that means is that um, we ended up with this number here um, as a total. However, uh, the code my logic, um, the vulnerable logic, saw the total as only four, which means that it, it passed this check because um, in this case, total is not greater than buff size. It, it believes that total is four. Um, so we passed this check. However, the reality was we had a very, very large number in um, the size A variable. And now we take that very, very large number and we pass that to stir and copy right here. And one of the issues with that is, is that if we go look at stir and copy, it takes a size T for that argument. And a size T is, is very capable of holding a number that was as big as this four, this four billion one, okay? And so, and it's also unsigned. So essentially what we did is we tried to copy um, <laughs> four billion something bytes into a 256 byte buffer and uh, we overflowed, we way overflowed it and all this stuff, okay? So um, now let's go, let's go back over here and take a look at the readout from address sanitizer. It says write of size 4,294,967,295 at this address. Um, the address is located in the stack of thread T0 offset 288 in frame, which means that that's, that's because the address is referring to this buffer and this was created inside of the function. It's a stack buffer. So this is a, a stack stack buffer overflow, as it says right here, we created. Um, and then, yeah, essentially we went, we went way out of bounds and, you know, very far out of bounds. And uh, enter sanitizer aboard the program. So I just want to show you an example of more of a real world bug. I think this was a good one to, to see. Now, um, that's actually, arguably, that's there's there's more flaws in this program because another way we could have prevented this would be just by sanitizing the user input. So what I mean by that, let me go back over here to the code now, is let's say that this was like a, this was a, a API function that you were using as a programmer. Well, as the, as the developer of the API, we could just say like, you know, let's pretend like this is the documentation here. Um, we could just say um, this function requires that size A and size B are 
are between zero and 256 or something like that, right? And um, now, or zero and 255, we don't wanna make it off by one there, <laughs> right? But um, anyway, so let's say we said something like that. Now, um, it would be up to whoever's using this function to check to make sure that, that these are valid, um, you know, that these aren't too big as they're passed into the function, like was what happened in this case. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to fault these things because you know if somebody if somebody wrote this function and um, they planned on only ever passing safe you know valid values into it and they made that part of the documentation that these values must be checked and verified before calling the function then it's not really the function's fault right but if there's just no documentation at all and there's no expectation of that. Um, or maybe the documentation is incorrect, then maybe we could fault the function itself because um, the correction in that case may be to just put a check inside of the function to avoid uh, this kind of a condition, right? So there's kind of a lot of thought that can go into this. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, this is also sort of an input sanitization issue because right here we're taking user input in kind of a scary way and then you know, we're just kind of blindly passing it to the function. You know, we should be validating the user input. Maybe we have some functions to make sure that it's constrained to, to uh, you know, to check before we pass it to copy to buffer. So these are different options to solve the problem. Um, so arguably there's like a, a input validation or sanitization issue. There's a, a you know, a unsigned integer wrapping issue here and um, there may even be other issues too. I mean, with some of the stuff that we're doing down here as well. Um, but at, at the very least, there's those two issues. And um, one way that you could see that how I actually tried to, I don't wanna say solve it, but how I was able to sidestep the issue was by making larger container variables and then storing what I called the real total in those larger in that larger container, so that, because they they wouldn't wrap on the max size of an unsigned integer, you know, they wouldn't wrap until you reach way bigger, you reached over a 64-bit number, um, which wouldn't be possible to be stored inside those variables anyway. So um, that's all I want to show you for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you took a lot out of this, and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe.